I joined when I was 18 years old. I went over there when I was 19. I was in 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines. I don't know how to describe being scared to death. You come out a little mean. There's a hostility that stays with you. Surviving sometimes is a curse. I didn't go outside for about two years. It's been really hard for me since I got out. Good afternoon. My name is AJ Rangel. I'm here today to do, um, I'm here today to, uh, I'm here today to introduce my, hello, my name is AJ Rangel. I'm, I'm here today to present my business plan. Be good. I contemplated not coming, but I just kind of give it a shot. I'm 46 years old. I've done everything the Marine Corps has asked of me, and now I'm leaving the Marine Corps powerless. You have job security, a steady paycheck, and then as soon as you're out, that's it. I think this is Archie's right here. I don't know what's waiting for me when I leave the Marine Corps. This is a huge opportunity to build my own future. If this doesn't work, what am I going to do to provide for my family? Archie's Acres is the first certified hydro-organic farm in America. We are known for our basil. We put out 1,200 plants a week here. Colin and I created a program to teach agriculture to transitioning military as well as civilians. It's a six-week course. Our whole thing is to teach skills. We go from concept of a business idea to presentation of a business plan. There'll be classes on economics, nutrition, education, soil science, food safety, water conservation. You guys will present the business plan on Thursday of week six. We've had students get funding from their presentation. It's an opportunity to reinvent themselves completely. If you don't present your plan, you can't graduate. If we could do student intros. My name is Chad Armstrong, uh, former Marine. I'm Mike Morningstar, prior Air Force. I'm an active duty Marine, former Marine also. I was in the Air Force. I'm getting ready to retire this year. So I'll be retiring in the end of June after 24 years. My name's AJ, I'm prior Navy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking the risk of setting six weeks of your life aside and coming out here to give this program a try. Farms impact local communities, the economy, our natural resources, and our climate. 70% of the farms in Syria have failed because of climate change. This job is difficult. There's uh, risk involved. There's long days. And there's a lot of farms out there that can't pay their bills at the end of the day. Well, guess what? That farm will cease to exist. Everywhere that I've been, I've had the bike. In Iraq, I had the bike. Built dirt jumps and built skate parks, essentially, in Iraq. It's what really has kept me sane through all of it. I joined uh, the Marines straight out of high school, and they told me, you're going to see the world, you're going to see Australia and Thailand and you know all these great places. And I did two tours through Iraq. I was a detention facility guard in Fallujah. There were women there, there were children there, there were elderly there. When people showed up, they, you know, their hands were zip tied behind them, they had blindfolds on. Some of that just sticks with you. And then I've been doing contract uh, aviation maintenance ever since. But there's only so many times you can be drenched in hydraulic fluid or jet fuel. That stuff's terrible for your health. I'm seeing a slew of doctors that are trying to figure out some possible autoimmune condition that I might have. My knees the pain gets worse to where it kind of feels like somebody's, you know, jamming a nail into the joint itself. 
That's what got me into eating a plant-based diet and possibly growing my own fruits and vegetables. Plant medicine is what will heal the body. That's my goal. I've been in the military for just shy of 25 years. It goes by fast. I'm from Texas, and Texas is a patriotic state. It means a lot to me to serve my country. My first deployment was to Iraq. Coming back, you try to fit back into where you left off. It's hard to sleep. You have dreams about the blood and guts and just, just things that happen on the battlefield. This has been my only full-time job for the past 25 years, so transitioning from this is going to be a step into the unknown. But I want to wait for me to earn a living once I leave the Marine Corps. The beard, the long hair, it's an easy place to hide out at. My family didn't like it to begin with, so I haven't really got kissed for a couple years. You get knocked down, and it's hard to get up sometimes. It's a hard word to deal with, depression. That's what has me here. When we started this, people thought we were crazy. They're like veterans and farming, you know, what are you, nuts? Veterans have a much higher rate of becoming self-employed than the, than the general public does. I think a lot of it has to do with the leadership training that you, you get in the military. Those skills are very applicable to being an entrepreneur. If we perceive returning veterans back home differently, it's gonna change how they transition and integrate. Service members are made up of just everyday people. They had a calling to join the military to serve our country or, or just some greater good. So because you took a uniform off doesn't mean we hung up those values. I was very proud to be a Marine. Leaving the military, you lost your network. You can't relate to people at home because you've changed so much. The economy here sucks. You can't find a job. So what's your purpose, you know? There was one holiday, Christmas holiday, where Colin lost three dear friends to suicide. And that's when we said enough. And so we created our class to teach agriculture. Agriculture has always been a refuge for the war weary. I mean, even that movie Gladiator, right? All he wanted to do is go back and farm his wheat fields, you know? The difference that farming makes is that the same trigger finger that they use to kill people, they're now growing stuff. When I found out about the school in 2011, I did some more digging. That's when I found out that it was owned by a 3-1 veteran. And then I took that as like, how can I not attend the course, right? You know. You would never think John was in the Marine Corps, that's for sure. Me and John were in the same infantry unit. We deployed to uh, Iraq in 2004. It was the second battle of Fallujah. Fallujah could be the worst combat faced by American forces since Vietnam. C-130 gunships and fixed wing and artillery are all dropping munitions on the city. The mosques are going off, basically calling for jihad. Every instant was explosions, some of them so big it made my eyeballs feel like trampolines. All this dropping in on you, and then you move into it. Ah! That was night one. That's you. I think that is me, man. So I was in what's now become known as the Hell House. We were pinned down in that house for a good bit of time. And I remember the flash, the heat, and the, the little tiny shrapnel that hits you. And I was thinking, eh, that's a grenade, and I'm still pressing the, the trigger. Immediately after that is when I felt like a sledgehammer hit my thigh. 
as I'm telling myself to look at it, I hear my other self say, don't look at it, it might put you in shock. And the other self was saying, shut up, bitch, just look at your leg, you know? <laughs> Two AK rounds to the left femur, fragmentation to left shoulder, left hip, left ankle. It was certainly the most painful experience of my life, of which I am still thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, The growth that has come from that, um, I don't know that I would have had if I hadn't experienced it. So, you know. You have skills you've honed from the military, and to be able to take those and reorient them from what is essentially a destructive endeavor into a productive endeavor is uh, therapeutic in and of itself. This is just a Dutch bucket system. It's literally a bucket oh. inside of a bucket, so it's gonna drain into this bottom bucket. It's a lot more intense than what I thought it was gonna be. And I kinda knew it was gonna be a fast-paced course, but I had no idea it was gonna be as much actual, you know, class time, class work. Solenoids, pumps, irrigation, uh, fertigation, is just a lot of information to, um, to absorb at once. But I'm gonna make it work. I want to buy an acre of land back in Houston and provide a healthy food choice for my local communities and for my family. Go, babe. The unkept look kind of started to weigh me down. You see yourself all gray and beat up. That type of energy, you know, it breaks you. So I had to get rid of the beard. I always feel like I'm coming short, just constantly playing catch up, catch up, catch up. You can pass me a napkin. You know, there's not too many vacations. There's not too, too many extra frills. Without your beard, you look um, um younger. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a different person. Being at the farming program, I'm there to, to learn how to feed my, my family. Calculation to measure electricity is volts times amps equals watts. So 30 lights times five. I'm at 150 amps. As you install lights, your amps are gonna get eaten up real quick. The homework that I have tonight is probably gonna be about three hours probably another three to four hours tomorrow. There's a math assignment, a lecture quiz, farm business, business plan, and then our online research project. It just snowballs. The first week was just very basic algebra, and now we're starting to pick up. The workload has pretty much doubled, almost tripled at this point. I'm starting to see what I got myself into. Transitioning from the military back to the civilian life, they don't give you nearly enough preparation for it. You're trained to be a Marine and think like a Marine and act like a Marine, so to transition back to this world and just tell somebody this is how you write a resume, that doesn't work. Sean has a very calm peacefulness to him. That's what I, I really appreciate about him. Our business plan is to establish a container farm in the U.S. Virgin Islands that can provide organic produce. Not everyone has access to healthy food, and I think that we have an obligation as people to provide that to others. How's your uh, business plan going? Um, well, I'm still... What are you going to be growing? Tomatoes. Yeah. Regular tomatoes or heirloom? Yeah, or... I plan on moving back to Houston at the end of June. Once we get there, I'm going to start looking at... Uh, either looking at, you know, buying land, maybe an acre, and, uh, and building a greenhouse. Why a greenhouse? Why, why spend the money on a greenhouse? Because remember, this is a business. Right. 
growing up where, where I'm from, that was nobody that had anything to do with agriculture. That was no place to, uh, to plant anything in, in the projects where I grew up in. So it's been discouraging thinking that, how, how am I going to make this work? I'm going to be yeah. a farmer. Oh, 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 I forgot. We're going to be a farmer. Farmer? Farm. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> I what told you him. Farm in your backyard? You think he can make a living as a farmer? No. No. <laughs> you never know. You, you say, never know. You to say, no. no. Uh, anytime I'm marijuana. Uh, now, we're going to get the answer. That's going to be separate. <laughs> you look so much younger, you know? I was being a bum for a couple years. There's no work, you know? I get injured, my, you know, my back will give out, and I'm just, you know, I'm down sometimes for a week. There's a vulnerability when you can't provide for your family. Little by little, I'm getting over that. This class has given me that confidence. This is a spot to the left. There's a lot of lots around here that Nothing's being done with them, you know? They're just a place to throw your trash away. I see a lot of possibility. So this is one of them that I think about. If not a community garden, just, you know, something else. Let's put something here. Let's grow something. OK, so this is your field exam. Uh, Identify the five different media. These are grow stones, these are leca stones, and this is perlite. Cobra choir, mm -hmm. grow stones, perlite, leca stones. Um, the grow stones, mm -hmm. the leca stones, mm -hmm. the perlite, yep. the rock wool, or cocoa choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the, uh, the, air, the air stone. Mm -hmm. There's an air stone inside as well as an air stone bladder below it. Here's the heater and the filter. Yep. All right. Was it as, as bad as you thought it was? Oh, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> it was the last one. It's hard to believe that next week is the final week. It definitely flew by a lot faster than I expected. I remember that pressure well. I definitely was uh, challenged mathematically. I found it uh, very challenging. But I think Archie's Acres is a path into becoming someone else, something else involved in something bigger and better than the combat that we may have experienced. Being able to communicate that to other veterans that I see are maybe in a, in a place of hurt and showing them that there is another option that can be life-changing. For me, that's been instrumental in having a healthier outlook. Navy, Marine, Marine, Marine. Marine? Marine? Marine. I know two Marines. Uh, one was going through a real trying time, and he happened to meet another former Marine, and he has an incredibly positive attitude. Yeah. And the other former Marine expressed to him that what a po how, you know, how beneficial in him getting to know him was. Yeah. You know, it, it potentially uh, prevented a suicide, just knowing him. People are tribal, right? We all tend to group towards people who are like us. And in general public, that typically means like race or religion or economic group, politics. But it seems like the service members and vets transcend all those lines under the umbrella that we're all in uniform at one point in time. What's been y'all's experience coming here as far as uh, <clears throat> just the inter-service com camaraderie piece, for instance, tell me about it. What, that, what was that like? I wanted to say I came here to be with you guys for this environment. I could have gone online or some other school to learn the hydroponics, but the program here, people being military, ex-military, it's nice to be with people that have an idea of what what you're going through and um, and to be there. There's um, strength in, in the people being together. That goes a long way for me. The new equation we're going to teach you today is if we take the amount, amount of water applied in inches divided by a soil moisture depletion in inches per foot gives us, gives us depth in feet. And again, in the equation process, 
We have inches and inches per foot. The inches cancel each other out, and we're left with feet for the depth. All my math in college, to the nail to get over the courses. Remedial, a lot of tutoring hours. It's a little struggle for me, and I just need to you know, find a way to get over it. Having a daughter, all my focus is on her. Read out the question, and then you put the answer, OK? OK. What are the three main reasons for the use of a biofilter? Does that say di di digester? Digester. Digester. I want to show her that this is, you know, this is doable. That this challenge isn't going to get the better of me. Depth is three feet. Okay, do and we this know again. Soil moisture depletion is 0.5 inches per foot. So I'm going to utilize the equation: three feet mm -hmm. times, times 0.5. Today's exam day, and uh, I'm here early. Had a rough night. I got to my family's house at 12 at night, and I didn't want to disturb them, so I slept in the car. All right, so we have the final exam here, about 9 o'clock, so you guys have until 11. I'm just really hoping I do well. This is it. I still want to do this. If I can make this work, you know, it's not going to be a job for me. It's going to be a labor of love. This is part of the process. Twenty minutes, guys. I need to keep it, but if you want to go through it, you can. Good job. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I totally biffed it. You know, my history, fears of failure were just fucking on my shoulders, too. So. AJ, come right here. Good job. Oh, thank you. Fuck yes. It feels real good. I'm ready to do 50 push ups, 100, at least in my mind. I'm presenting myself. I want to look nice, look good. I just don't want to look like a dropout. I'm not going to be the hobo anymore. final exam's done, so now we're getting into the plan. Now we're just taking the stress and moving it from one plate into another. Hello, good afternoon. My name is um, AJ Rangel. I'm here today to present to you my business plan. They're going to present what they learned in six weeks to a panel of farmers, bankers, investors, business analysts that are actually in a position to either hire or fund it's possible to walk out with $100,000. It's like Shark Tank 1.0. I'd love to see one of these guys on Shark Tank one day, you know, starting here and graduating to the big leagues. That's what we're looking for. The presentations, we've had people not show up. We've had people cry. We've had people puke. We've had people pass out. We've had people hide in the bathroom. Public speaking is one of the scariest things in the world. The indirect consequence of that is it builds confidence. The most nerve wracking part of this course is actually getting up in front of these people and putting on this business presentation. Service members tend to face higher unemployment rates. I mean, typically do a very poor job as a country in terms of transitioning service members out of the uniform into the general public. But with that said, service members have a much higher rate of becoming entrepreneurs than members of the general public. And so that entrepreneurial spirit is something that we want to capitalize on. This is what makes us feel good at the end of the day, is seeing these guys successful on the other end.
My name is Sean Shimkus. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my business plan here for Red Hook Organics. My name is Dexter Weber. The name of my company is going to be Weber Organics. Dragon Pie is a veteran-operated, sustainable micro-farm. I was a United States Marine. I served nine years and did three tours in Iraq. My grandparents have been farming in Iowa uh, since the 19th century. This is what I, I intend to sell at market, $2 a pound for strawberries. $2.75 per bundle, roughly a pound of Swiss chard. Any other fruit or vegetable? It will depend on the feedback that I'm getting from the market. Target markets, local supermarkets, local restaurants. I plan to use face, face twit, whatever XX thing. <laughs> Upfront cost of the crop box is the $95,000 unit. $50,000 for land purchase of an acre. We're gonna get an FSA loan of $110,000. For the next two years, I'm drawing you know, a decent profit at over $30,000. Have you met with any of these restaurants to find out first what, what are they serving? Yes. $95,000 seems high. Is there any way to get that cost down? Sourcing materials on in the Caribbean islands are really tough. Gotcha. Right? But what's your background in the military and how will that assist you with this new venture? My background in the military, I was a IT, I was an IT guy, information technology. So my background as a planner, I think that's gonna help me be able to manage my farm. It's a little brutal, but it's still worth it. Their real work begins tomorrow when they graduate. That's when the reality hits. I didn't get a chance to attend the uh, graduation ceremony because I had my retirement ceremony going on during the same time. I'm happy that he's retiring. Um, 25 years is a long time, so now we can finally settle in Houston and be around family. Monday might be a different story, because um, he won't be getting up to go to work anymore, and I'll be like, what are you going to do all day? <laughs> There's going to be a lot of discouragement along the way. Virtually everybody's going to tell you you're crazy and you can't do it. But one thing I can tell you, the fact that you're in this class means that you're already going against the grain. Today's vet is either labeled as a hero or a victim, because that's how we treat them. And I just think we have that totally backward. The whole system has come to dishonor our service. We should continue to lean on these people for those leadership skills, for that work ethic. And that investment we make today, the transition of our service members, will pay us back tenfold. Congratulations. So happy for you. <laughs> we grow basil, but we also grow farmers. We've had over 400 students by now. 68% either own their own farm or we're managing someone else's. We have basil growers, kale growers. Herbs, leafy greens, fruit and tomatoes. Hot sauce makers, ketchup makers. A pie company. I would have never been able to have direction if I wasn't here. He did well. I'm proud of him. <laughs> right now with this momentum, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it.